If we could take our seats. <laughs> Members, we've um, concluded the inquiry stage of our, our meeting on item 14, and we now go uh, into the conversation debate stage, and um, we're treating with the amendment uh, moved by Councillor Simpson and spoken to by Councillor Simpson, uh, seconded by Councillor Coombe, and I'm now going to take the call of Councillor Coombe. Kia ora, Councillor Coombe. Uh, tēnā koe, Mr Chair. <clears throat> As always, I'll try very hard to speak um, without coughing in everybody's ear. Um, I just want to speak very briefly because Councillor Simpson has already outlined what this amendment is intended to achieve. And I do want to um, speak more fully when we come to the substantive motion about my approach to the matters before us today in, in more detail. But um, why I'm supporting this is because I think there is more work that, that needs to be done and we need to reflect further on the feedback. <clears throat> And I really am concerned about the pressure that staff are under, and we've heard about that that might have an impact on um, what we're directing, potentially under M of the Chair's Rex. Um, but I do feel that we have got to give more consideration to what has come through the feedback. <coughs> Apologies. Um, and also the amendment, if it can be just brought up. Um, it does have the important proviso to it. Um, it's not just a blanket bringing in all fours. Um, would be good to see the wording just so I can talk to that. I don't know if you've got it. We have it on our screen now. You may not be able to see it, but it is before you. Or it's before us. It's not on my screen, Mr Chair, sorry. Just um, bear, bear with us. Um, I think Members, it's on Nexus and um, oh, there we go. No, Councillor Coombe, you've got it emailed as well. I was relying on it being on the screen. Thank you. But this is an pr important proviso as well, that um, it is where the overall quality of the area is maintained and existing or potential fragmentation is reduced. So I think it does give provide some flexibility. And, you know, it might be brought back to us quite differently um, it, by August once we've actually ha had the opportunity to assess further the feedback look at the maps and take further advice. Um, so that's just to confirm my support. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Coombe. Uh, Councillor Henderson, please. No, it's not. Councillor, Councillor Henderson's just swapping microphones. This isn't on at all. <laughs> Sabotage. <laughs> that one seems to be activated. Listen, that's starting. A new battery. Okay. Shall I stand here? <laughs> Councillor Henderson, can we come back to you after another speaker? Yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you, yeah. Councillor Watson, please. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Mr Chair. Earlier in the day, uh, we heard uh, the views of uh, Minister Woods and, and Minister Parker on this matter of uh, special character areas. And to paraphrase uh, Minister Parker, he said it, and I think he was referring to Auckland Council when he said that, needs to stop trying to protect entire suburbs and focus only on specific heritage buildings. Uh, now, whether Mr Parker doesn't understand the difference between individually scheduled heritage buildings, which he seemed to be promoting, and special character areas. I hope it's a misunderstanding. I hope he doesn't mean that he doesn't want special character areas uh, in their total. But at any rate, they're not the members of the Labour Party we should be listening to. Uh, the person I want to quote when it came to heritage and special character said, our heritage should not be an either or. We're a young country when it comes to built heritage, and we should be doing everything we can to preserve what we have. The council, and they meant Auckland Council, now needs to work with urgency to ensure a solution that safeguards heritage in our communities 
so that it's not permanently lost, Jacinda Ardern says. And that was only a couple of years ago when we were going through the unitary plan process. Um, in respect of what's at stake here, uh, and comparing it to uh, the priorities that Jacinda established there, we potentially stand to lose a quarter of what uh, remains of Auckland special character areas. And what remains being the operative words there, because we've already lost a lot uh, thus far. In this particular round, some parts of Auckland stand to lose even more. If you're in the Kaipataki local board area, you stand to lose 100% of your special character area. If you're in the North Shore Ward, you stand to lose 66%, and that's two of our three historic marine suburbs. Um, and actually, um, if we look at that, we actually stand to lose a little bit more, because uh, in some of these submissions, such as the Devonport Heritage Society, they talked about the collective strength and relationship to each other these various special character areas have. They have strong similarities, but also their own identities. Reducing and destroying some parts will affect the integrity of the whole. Um, and uh, Devonport referred to Birkenhead and Northgate. They might as well have been referring to other parts of Auckland too. What I find a little hard to understand in this process is when I look at Schedule 15, which was the work that was done through the unitary plan, uh, when we talk about areas such as Birkenhead and Northcote Points could just as equally be some of the other parts of Auckland, we have commentary like the overlay area is significant for its physical and visual qualities as it retains a large grouping, large grouping of houses that collectively demonstrate the late 19th and early 20th century period of settlement uh, and illustrate the pattern of urban development. Surviving houses from this period, including visit villas, transitional villas, bungalows, um, demonstrate the design principles and aesthetics from this period, as well as social patterns of the time. They couldn't be more <coughs> glowing in their testimony to the historic value of these areas. Uh, that hasn't just suddenly gone away. Those suburbs are still there, and so are those comments. We've been told throughout this process that it's necessary to remove the protection for such historic suburbs in order to supply more housing, yet we know that that's has no relation to Auckland's unitary plan and this process that we're going through, which will enable well over a million uh, sites in residentially zoned land. The other rationale, uh, advanced rather hopefully, I would say, is that somehow they'll help build more affordable homes in these places. That almost certainly will not come about as a consequence in the uplift of development potential and the price that goes with it. In fact, the notion that poor families or young couples shut out of the housing market will suddenly be able to move into a new townhouse on Northcote Point is cruelly misleading. That is not what's going to happen at all, and everyone knows that, and that goes for the other places. One villa will be knocked down, and three equally expensive three-storied uh, constructions will be put up. There'll be no benefit to those poor souls locked out of the affordability market. This will do nothing for that. The same goes for transport hubs. Up in Silverdale, at the far end of uh, Auckland, we have uh, buildings that Norman Kirk would have described as filing cabinets to put the workers in. They all start at 1.1.2, 1.4 1 million, overlooking a park and ride car park. So, don't kid us on that this has got anything to do with affordability. The experts say it won't result in that at all. In reality, it's political window dressing of the worst kind. We know that. The people out in these areas know that as well. There's a far deeper structural problem that goes to the removal of government investment in housing uh, that goes right back to the 1980s and the Douglas reforms. So, so cut to it. The case for including fours is actually articulated very clearly at point 61. And it says, from a technical perspective, property scoring four contribute or support the overall character of an area and could reduce the fragmentation of the overlay in some areas. If all fours in the walkable catchments were attained, that would mean an additional 1,400 sites. As I said earlier, 1,400 sites is about a third of a major development. That's the quantum of what we're talking Absolutely. about. Councillor, can you wrap up where it's six months? Wrapping up now, Mr Chair, if we... 
I'm happy to move an extension of time. Happy to second. Okay, I'd, like, I'd prefer the councillor to wrap up. He said he's wrapping up. I'll try and wrap you. up. I didn't realise it was such an enthralling speech. Yeah. I'll keep going, but I will wrap up, um, Mr Chair, because it's been a long day. So we are given the rationale. We've oh, heard yeah. from the officers today. We can do this if we want to. So, like Jacinda Ardern, just, or like 72% of Aucklanders just recently... Oh, yeah who express their value for the retention of Auckland's special character, if, if you really support special character, if you don't want to be your legacy of 25% reduction in Auckland's special character, that's what we're talking about, then you'll back this, this rather mild amendment. And I will signal, Mr Chair, like Jacinda, that if this doesn't go towards preserving our heritage, that she signalled two or three years ago, four years ago in fact, then I will be revisiting that. But as far as the starting point goes, this is an adequate place to begin. If you value special heritage, back this resolution. Here, here. Thank you. Um, just remind our members, it's a five minute, minute speaking to, an, to a motion and uh, Councillor Henderson, yours now. Thank you, Chair. Um, Look, I'll talk, yeah, can we, I'm hearing stuff over the microphone and the internet there. Maybe, maybe let's mute people there. Thank you. Um, look, I'll, we'll talk more about the special character areas generally in the next discussion. This is purely on the amendment. That's what I'm going to be talking about. So I reserve my right to speak a little bit later, given that we're already 7.39, which I brought my sleeping bag. Um, this amendment, look, um, we've been advised here by staff, I'll remind everybody, that we don't even know the consequences of this amendment and what it's actually going to be. That's not clear. When do we ever at this body vote for things where we don't know the outcomes? The only thing we can be clear on in this amendment is that it will further damage attempts to house Aucklanders that need it in favour of single sites and well-located places that actually don't have that much heritage status at all, according to our own data, according to what staff have told us, What's also clear is that planning committee staff time is valuable and scarce and shouldn't be wasted. Councillors, we're talking about an unspecified amount of housing in an unspecified place and what amounts to a vote based on the vibe of the thing rather than anything tangible for Aucklanders. So I will encourage you all to vote this down strongly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henderson and the Deputy Mayor, please. Thanks, Mr Chair. I'll be very brief. We have to vote here what is best for all of our communities. All of our communities. Adding four to five and six as, as heritage classes, um, character areas, is not going to come without risks. The independence hearing panel, and the Mayor alluded to it, could very well say you have not got the data based right. Our head of heritage there was a question whether he could actually get the database right in time and still do the other work. So we've got a choice. You can either respond to the submissions from the feedback, which might very well include some fours, or you do the investigation to the fours. I would much prefer that we respond to the feedback, Mr Chair, because um, these are people who have vested their time and efforts into making their opinions known to us. We should respond to them before we do an official investigations into foot level four heritage um, when it will displace that feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'll now go to Independent Māori Statutory Board Member Tō Henare. Kia ora, Tō. You're a bit faint, Tō. Oh, I'm, I'm a bit faint. Yeah. Uh, it's most probably because I haven't had any tea. No, no, no. Um, um, uh, I just want to make a, a, a very small point. And one is, just imagine what you were doing or what your ancestors were doing in 1840, looking over this beautiful city and what a special character it was then. Well, I haven't heard the word Māori or, or tangata whenua, um, even mātāwaka throughout this whole day. I can't support the amendment because I don't know where it's going. And I don't know where it would land. 
I support what the what what the mayor said very early today is that we might we might get hung up on the special character issue, but I'm hung up on homes for our people. And uh, I, I just don't think that protecting um, uh, one or two villas or one or two special characters. You know, I look out my window right now and I have 16 apartments going up less than 20 metres away from my home, my mother-in-law's home next door to me and my brother-in-law's home next door to her. We have, what happened to the special character of Tower Road, Tiaratu Peninsula? Well, it got all gobbled up and now you're worried about the special character? Sorry. Um, I like the fact that there's going to be a lot of whānau across the road from me. I like the fact that just around the corner, there's going to be a whole new lot of whānau living uh, in the Teratu Peninsula. But please, let's get this uh, done and dusted, because I do feel sorry for the staff. Uh, that have to hang around, and and we just so, so, some of these councillors are just jumping up and down because it's an election time, and I, and I really I, I really feel quite strongly about uh, about this. Let's not make the special character issue the issue because it's not homelessness and affordability is the issue. Kilda. Kia ora, Member uh, To, and now go to Councillor Newman, please. Yeah, Mr Chair, I mean, I could really go either way on this one, to be honest. Um, I guess, you know, in response to what um, Shane Henderson said, look, this council votes all the time in the fog without really having an idea of what the end consequence will be. We don't know what the end cost of CRL will be. We don't know what... What what if ATAP's achievable? We don't know how good the NZ Up program's going to be. Um, I I'm I don't believe um, that we can in perpetuity um, offer every protection to every every community that um, serves up uh, heritage as an argument for no change in that particular neighbourhood, but. You know, when you look at this issue, there's no doubt that in terms of affordability, um, there is not going to be a whole lot of new affordable product coming onto the market um, because uh, that's not how it works. Uh, the value of the land drives the uh, imperative to capitalise that land and whether you release for or, you know, whether, yeah, whether you keep the overlay at four or release it um, uh, and go to five or six, uh, the reality is it's still very expensive. So I think that the argument around affordability is is a red herring because Auckland is not affordable, uh, hasn't been for a very long time, and I doubt it ever will be again. Um, I think that I think that Kiwi Build has been. A debacle, and I think that some of the impetus around some of these housing changes has not been very good at all. But you know, Chair, I guess as a favour to some of the people personally who are, who are lobbying for this, I'm prepared to vote for this. I could go either way, but the amount of housing that actually falls uh, within this sort of band, this cohort, is fairly modest. Um, but if if it is if it is the case that um, this amendment passes, <clears throat> and if it is the case that um, well the commissioner says well you know what I'm not prepared to consider the special character overlay because I don't think that the council's acted with the intent of complying with the NPSUD. It's just looking to for arguments to try and gain this. If it is the case that the commissioner uh, sends back recommendations that we do not like. Um, it will have to be up to the sponsors of this amendment, frankly, to to quit, you know, to come back with an argument that says, well, actually, the commissioners are wrong. And if that argument is not very valid, uh, they're just going to have to accept it. But let's take the argument forward to the commissioner and let's see what they say. I'm looking forward to seeing 
the submissions that my constituents bring back. And um, because I've got real a uh, real passion for the overlay in my ward, which is not about the built environment, but it is nevertheless, it's an important discussion that my constituents want to have. So it could go either way, um, Mr Chair, but let's see what happens if we push this out and try and include four. Um, and let's have that discussion and see where the evidence takes us. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dalton. Thank you, Chair. Look, I, I'm pretty disappointed with this amendment coming at this point in time, I've got to say. You know, we've been through hours of this and we've heard from our officers who have given us their expert advice. And with you all, I just sat through over 60 hours of finance meetings on the annual plan taking expert advice and being encouraged to. The conversation here is also getting mixed between heritage and special character. Now, I, I support heritage. I think we should be retaining heritage in our city. It is important. We're a young city. So we don't have a lot of heritage, really, do we? We're a bit young. But we've also got to consider the, the region, right? We're making decisions for the region. And I'm coming from a place, from, from a ward that is bearing the brunt of intensification, and so is Councillor Henderson and Councillor Cooper. And we've got to be able to share this. Like The intention of this, this affordability is, I agree, it's a bit of a... ...want is for people to live close to frequent traveller networks, transport networks, walkable catchments to the cities, to the metros. That's the intention, is to be able to get people closer to their place of work, to where they go to school, to make life a bit easier. Yes, reducing emissions, because we have some commitments that we have made, not only domestically, or, but internationally as well, to respond to the climate change. That means voting for contentious things, which I have done, and they're getting a lot of stick for, like the parking strategy and the cycle plan. And I'll get stick for voting against this as well, but I will be consistent in a regional approach to where Auckland is directed in the future. The city is changing, it must change. We have no choice but to change. And I agree with To. this is getting a whole lot of attention in an election year. And it's, 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 it's not that fair for the rest of the region for this to be taking place as vehemently, actually, as it has been. So I'm, I'm sorry, Councillor Simpson and Councillor Coon. I won't be supporting the fours because the advice that we've received, and yes, we've been told by Noel that he has the time to do it, but actually there's a compromise. There's other things that he can't do. And this has come in in the 11th hour from my perspective. I want this to go out for consultation. Pardon? I'll point, point of order I want to hear what submitters say, and I want to hear from all of Auckland, not just part of Auckland. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sayers, your call. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, it's been a long night, Seth. Uh, my comment is, is, is this, that the, I think there's a bit of, we're trying to react to a government mandate and in my mind, showboating by the government. to make uh, supply and affordability. It's a showboat. It's, 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 it's put us under enormous pressure and our staff are trying to respond as best they can, as we've just heard. I don't agree with it. I think it's politically driven and bipartisan agreement, whatever, it's not right for Auckland.
the the fact that there is no definition of what affordability is worries me, Chair. You know, um, they say uh, we want to we want to increase supply or demand, supply versus demand to um, make housing affordable. Well, so what's the price? No response on that. That's a cop out. I don't like it. I don't feel comfortable with it. It's a, it, to me, it's very um, ego driven rather than actually trying to produce a result. Because, you know, what's going to happen is that there's going to be uh, houses pepper pop around the place. Next to people's houses, okay, if you're pepper pop to a de 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 developer, you're going to make money. If you're next to your neighbour, you're going to lose out. And that is not what our unitary plan was about. Auckland has created a magnificent plan after huge angst to produce a plan that produces 900,000 homes over the next 30 years, almost a million, right? I don't know if they'll be affordable. I doubt it because affordability isn't defined particularly well by anybody. However, this um, objective from the government is wrong. I disagree with it. New Zealanders should be against these to be against it across all the cities and um, chair I, my final comment would be this affects more than Auckland it affects a number of cities on those tier one you know I know that Pukekohe, um Walkworth are opening up so much green land versus brown developments is it's it, it's, it copes for so much of the um, capacity that we need. Doesn't mean they're affordable, but it has the capacity. So I can't support. Um, I, I will support this amendment, but I can't support the um, idea that uh, what the government suggested is a good one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'll now to go. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. So I'm entirely supportive of the amendment by uh, by Desley and Pippa, and certainly on my part, um, it's entirely um, uh, genuine. I've been the council's liaison person on the heritage panel, and I've attended heritage panel meetings many years prior to that. Um, I can tell you, because I've been in touch with every special character group across Auckland without exception, I've read their submissions, I've seen their evidence, and recently I've seen how they have crunched the numbers around the fives, the sixes and the fours, and that's been done by qualified people, statisticians, heritage experts, and it works. It works. What it has is the impact of retaining a special character area, making it more integral, more cohesive, reducing the fragmentation so that you have a special character area that stands as a neighbourhood, as a livable community with both the extremes of scheduled heritage and the special character and, increasingly, the new builds that are complementary. So if you go around areas, these special character areas, you'll actually see that the unitary plan and the previous plans of Auckland City and North Shore and others are working. And what we are doing 
is actually enhancing that process. The heritage that we're talking about is the heritage of all of us, both Māori and Pākehā, because we all live in these homes, and many of these homes were settled by Māori and Pacifica earlier in places like Ponsonby and throughout the Isthmus, because that is where many people lived. It wasn't always expensive housing. It is expensive now, but it's representative of what makes Auckland special. It's representative of the coastal settlements that are built out of the Kauri, the Rimu, the Matai, the Tawa, so many timbers and effectively trees that are the Taanga, the treasures of Auckland. And Auckland is one of the few cities on the planet, on the entire planet, where you actually find built heritage made of wood, made of trees, and not just any trees, but special trees. So that is our heritage, and that heritage goes all the way back. It's the heritage of the buildings, it's the heritage of the people, the notable people, the others, and the ordinary people that lived in those buildings. It should not go. What this amendment does is it simply directs the officers to go away based on some evidence around the fours and preventing some fragmentation, making some tweaks, so that we're in a better position to make a decision, and it's not the final decision that's made later, but it gives us the basis to make a better, more informed decision a little later. And Noel Redden has said, yes, it can be done. And certainly, from the evidence I've read and the special character groups who have already done the work, they've done the work, they know it works in some detail, I'm confident that it works. It's also incredibly important because this heritage in many locations, like that Peter Siddle building at the back there, close the flanks of the munga. It protects them. It protects the vegetation around them. It protects the green spaces. And if we have the three houses, three storeys everywhere, the developers move in, as you know, because you'll see it. The site is scalped, no trees, excavators, boundary to boundary, significant retaining walls, impervious surface area, concrete and structures that bear no relationship to the landscape. Do you want that in locations like Devonport or elsewhere? I would say no. So voting for the amendment gives us the opportunity to make a better decision later. And I would like to think retain that heritage. Making my point again around the munga, it is integral to the cultural and aesthetic heritage of our munga, of which there are many. And as, as I pointed out, some of those munga are threatened by the walkable catchments, particularly Mount Hobson, Awaraka, for example, and they are special cases. And I would have hoped that the IMSB members and Iwi generally would be supportive of retaining a heritage that may be somewhat colonial, but it harks back to the early history of the area in terms of the volcanic landforms that underlie it and the Iwi so culture that was down. built on that. So it is important. So I make a plea to councillors, please vote for this. It's evidence-based. It will enhance our evidence and enhance our decision-making so that we can make the best decision for Auckland. We're on this earth for a limited period of time. There aren't too many occasions... I need you to wrap up, please, yes, councillor. Yes, where we have the opportunity to make a decision for Auckland's long-term well, heritage minutes. going forward. The modernist stuff, that'll be gone in the future. It'll be bold. But the heritage will remain, as it does in so many places around the planet and is so loved. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Mayor Gough, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Chair. Personally, I'm in favour of protecting as much quality, uh, special character housing as is possible. We're a young country. We don't have a lot of it. And nor do I think that Parliament has done the right thing in trying to trade off um, removal of, of uh, special character uh, in order to create capacity. Uh, we know capacity is not the real problem at the moment. It's infrastructure to service the building of houses. Having said that, if I'm in favour of protecting special character, then I want to work out intelligently how the best way of doing that might be. It's not about puffing my chest out to folk who rightly support heritage and saying, I was staunch, we showed them and we went down in another glorious defeat. I'm not interested in glorious defeats. I'm interested actually in preserving as much quality special character as possible. And we will do that in one way only, by persuading the members of the independent hearing panel that our methodology for protection of quality special character is robust and it's within the rules set out by the National Policy Statement on Urban Development. That's what they're looking for. They will look to what we are arguing and say, is their methodology in seeking to protect these areas robust? Is it defensible? Is it credible? But most particularly, is it in line with what the National Policy Statement on Urban Development requires? And if it isn't, they will discount our submission. And if they discount our submission, they will roll back the protection that we might otherwise have gained much further than would otherwise have been the case. You know, there's no appeal from their decision. Oh, there is, of course. We can go to the Minister. The Minister has made his point absolutely clear. Both Ministers have. We're trying to protect too much. That's outside the rules. And that creates the context itself in which the independent hearing panel will make its decision. So let's not think about trying to show our electorates three months before an election how, how much we stood up for what, uh, what they might have wanted. Let's actually genuinely do, if you want to protect special character areas, what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is what our advisers have told us explicitly. I put Noel Reardon on the spot. I said, if we, I'm sorry, Noel, if, if we include the fours, does that strengthen our case or undermine our case? He's the expert. I'm not the expert. Nobody around this table is the expert. He said it would not help our case. Megan Tyler said it would not help our case. John Toogood said it would not help our case. These are the people that aren't political, but they're there to give us competent and professional advice. And the advice they've given us is that if you go down that track, you undermine your case. I don't want to undermine the case for protecting special character. I want to strengthen it. So my point is very clearly this. The more to, that we depart from what the national policy statement requires and the independent hearing panel is likely to uphold, the more we undermine our own case and our ability to achieve the best outcome we can in terms of preservation of high quality special character. That's why I understand why a number of the councillors are supporting this amendment. I think that it will be counterproductive and I'll be voting against it. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, um, Mr Chair. And you have to agree, this has to be a defendable position and we've been told that over and over. And adding um, less opportunity for density is actually not defendable, because we've been told that. You know, and I think this is just so much Groundhog Day after the 2016 Unitary Plan. Unfortunately, we seem to make these decisions just before elections, and the same people making the same arguments, um, they say they want compact urban form, they want to reduce emissions and all those sorts of things, but when it comes to the hard decisions, they'll go, oh no, 
I want to vote for my area. You know, and we just can't do that. We're regional councillors. We might be elected locally, but regional councillors are elected locally all, pretty much all over the, over the country. You have to vote for the regional view, and we've got to vote so that, you know, when we get to that, to that um, independent hearing panel, our experts, and that's why we employ them, the experts, they're not politicians, they have to be able to defend what we vote for. And they can't actually defend it professionally if it's not what they believe in. So we put our staff in a, a terrible position. So I'll take their advice. I mean, the planners that we have here, I mean, one of them that's written a lot of this, I've known since 2004. I have a lot of faith in his ability. And they, they're not political. They're telling us straight what they think. And that's really important here. And the other thing for me is, um, you know, the less development you get in areas closer to the centre and in the suburbs and places near good transport, that intensification just comes out to the far-flung suburbs where there is no proper um, transport. And that just causes them more harm. And the other thing I wanted to, I really wanted to acknowledge Tau Henere. He's absolutely right. The people who live in Oraki now forget that the heritage of the people that live there was ripped away. Mm. And no one thought anything about it. The coastal areas, people lived there. But no one cared to, you know, they just drove them out and took their whare away and their pa. You know, we've got, we say it's heritage, but it's pretty young heritage. You know, it's not, it's not as if it's, it is, it is Pākehā heritage. And so, excuse me, sorry? Did you want to say please, something? Please carry on. Yeah, so I think the thing is we, we can't have it, you know, have had it one way before and now we want it our own way now. You know, I, I just think we've got to be really careful. I want to keep, I mean, my... I want to keep well, as much as we can of we've, we've got to preserve the majority, which is what we're the majority that's allowable, that's feasible and defendable. But we've still got a plan for the future. We can't just do exactly the same as we did at the unitary plan. I remember all the screaming matches and people, you know, deriding young people for saying they wanted somewhere they could live. People in that audience you know, saying, poor bubbers, you know, they're not going to get a house, tough luck. You know, I don't, want, I don't want us to go through that again. We need to put this to bed now, move on and put something defendable to the independent, and out to proposal and for the independent hearing panel. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Stewart. Thank you. I just, I'd like to say that I agree with um, Councillor Watson and, and uh, Councillor Walker, what they've just been saying about special character. <clears throat> I also, I just want to remember Des Morrison, who was a councillor around this table, and he was a CEO, and he was a very much respected councillor around this table. And I can remember Councillor um, Morrison all those years ago saying that we need, to, for affordable housing, we need to build them out near Glenbrook. We need to build them where there's blue collar work, we need to get our people back working, we need to get them off benefits. And we can't, we can't afford to lose what you can see over there. That, that's absolutely beautiful and stunning. Uh, for the, those that are listening online, I'm just looking at the most beautiful uh, painting in, in Devonport. And you know, once we've lost that heritage, we've lost it and it'll, we'll never get it back. Never get it back. So I'm going to support this um, submission, but I think one of the things that we should be doing, we should be, we should be building where the blue collar want to work, if they want to work. And in the 1970s, my father was a freezing worker, and in the 1970s, I tell you what, everybody, everybody was really proud and they all had came home with a pocket full of money and they felt proud.
But what we're going to do here, we're just going to just completely destroy our heritage. And it's not electioneering. This is real. Once it's gone, it's gone, and it can never be returned. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Councillor Fletcher, please. Why, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, it's been an interesting debate um, because I'm not really sure whether we're debating the amendment or we're speaking more generally. So I only want to speak for a short time we and are, I'm going we to are speak to it the more generally. Uh, OK, well, it, it's relevant to that. Um, for me, the regional view would have been to have invited Auckland MPs to Auckland months and months and months ago or written to them. All of us have talked to Auckland MPs and most of them haven't got a clue about the complexity of this whole situation. You've heard time and time again this evening, oh, I talked to this MP or I talked to that MP and they said, oh, just, just link it as a qualifying matter. Um, I, I, I find it interesting because I've been in both central government and local government. At central government, you can take a more general approach to things, whereas in local government, we have to get down to the weeds because we have to make sure that it works. One of the independent hearings commissioners, who shall remain nameless, rang me some months ago and said, what the hell's happening? We've got 30 years supply. We've got 900,000 sites. Is this just political window dressing? Or what on earth are we doing this for? It will not deal with the issue of affordability. It doesn't deal um, with any of the real challenges that are facing us, like infrastructure, as the mayor said. Um, I, I think we are a premier city and we're a tier one city, uh, but frankly, in terms of political advocacy, we get one out of 10 for me for advocacy. We should have been knocking on Wellington's door to Parliament and saying, do you realise what's at stake here? So the comments that others are making about the pressure that we're putting officers under, I support, I understand. But I know that this is one way of actually trying to hold the line. And no amount of emotional blackmail about, oh, this is election year, this is the only reason people are doing things. It doesn't hold weight with me. That Peter Sedell that everyone's referred to that you're looking at in the chamber, Mr. Chair, if you cast your eyes along to the left, that hung in Kath Hizzard's office. It hung in my office. And she said to me, hang it there, because it will remind you what you are fighting for when times get tough. And it did remind me, and I hope it reminds you tonight, Auckland is a beautiful city. We should be unapologetic about retaining the beauty of Auckland and, and retaining the stories of Aucklanders. Um, so I, I am supporting um, Councillor Simpson uh, and uh, Councillor Coombe, and I applaud her for actually taking a longer view on this, I hope that we can show the common sense to actually go and provide better advocacy to Wellington. And actually, this is not the only issue. There are so many other issues, as you well know. We need to do better and we get a one out of 10. This is happening on our watch. This is the legacy that we're leaving. We can make a difference. And I think it starts with this now. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. So the motion before us, the L um, Roman 1, and the next speaker is Independent Māori Statutory Board Member David Taipiri. Kia ora, David. Oh, kia ora, Mr Chairman. Uh, well, actually, I wasn't really going to speak, but I was hoping that you would put the motion, so I was going to move a motion to do so, but you're clearly at that point now, so thank you. OK, thank you. By, um, div by division, Mr Chair, when the vote comes, please. So, members, um, I am going to support the motion. Uh, it's something that I've given a lot of thought of, lot of thought to, just um, considering submissions and looking um, at this matter for some time. Um, I won't be um, um, colouring this up too much, but um, we're by no means looking at fours in the walkable catchments. I know we'd run into serious barriers there very quickly. Uh, when we get to the hearing, uh, into the hearing process, 
and neither am I looking at fours in totality in the non-walkables. It's well qualified, actually, and it's qualified to maintain that overall quality and reduce that frag fragmentation. Um, so I do note at the outset, um, and maybe there's a little bit of confusion, at this stage, the manager of Heritage has said he does not oppose this direction. Uh, it'll be interesting to see you know, how that um, position is once we've actually done this further work. It could change. It could be the status quo. He might not oppose it, um, might, not support, uh, might not support it. Um, point of but order. The, what is the point of order? Point of order is that what, the motion hasn't been moved by you. What is the point of order? Can you number the, the point, point of order, order. please, Council Sayers? Yeah, the point of order is that the point that, that you're speaking to this motion, but it's not your motion, sir. I'm not sure what's up at your place, um, councillor, but I am definitely speaking as is my right, as was the right of every other councillor that's spoken to this, to speak to this motion, and I'll now continue. Thank you. Um, what it does do, um, in a very modest way, and uh, this, does not, this will not have a major impact on capacity, um, but it does have the potential to create more coherent um, special character area streetscapes. Um, and that was one of the criticisms that I've seen in the, the, the feedback that we've received to date. I'm very aware of the feedback from Kainga Ora on behalf of the government um, and some other um, su submissions from agencies of government as well. I'm also aware of the submission of the Coalition for More Homes, who actually uh, stressed to us that they're, they're, they were actually quite supportive of seeing special character be protected in the non-walkable catchments. Some of us will remember that. They were not of the same opinion in the walkable catchments. So I don't see that this motion before us is at even at odds with some of those that have been advocating for greater height and density across Auckland. And look, the last point that I, I want to make is, look, I've heard some political um, uh, feedback from a couple of ministers. I've made my own comments about that feedback. Um, I actually don't think uh, it helps the debate at all. Uh, I would have thought ministers might want to actually write to us and do it formally rather than um, use media as they did. And I'm certainly not intimidated by ministers. Um, I want to get the very best result here. I think this could endure to a point where it does stand the test of the independent ha um, hearings panel. But we'll see about that. Let's do our work on these fours with that qualifier of maintaining the quality, reducing the fragmentation, um, and we'll see how we go. But um, I will be supporting it for the reasons outlined. And I'll now go to Councillor Philippina. Well, thank you, Chair. Um, hopefully uh, you don't cut in and out because I'm using my phone. Um, Chair, um, no matter what happens, can I say that this is a political move? And uh, from my perspective, Councillor Dalton is the one that made it clear for me around heritage um, and the difference between the two. Um, so look, I will not be voting uh, for the amendment. The other issue is it was actually quite a close call up until I heard Councillor Walker and he is the one that changed my mind and will vote against the amendment when he started talking about the MoMA. So, Chair, um, I'm not going to repeat what everybody else has said, but I will not be supporting the amendment. Kia ora. Kia ora, Councillor. That draws us to the end of the debate, and I will now hand to the Senior Governance Advisor to take the division. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. So this is a division on the amendment on screen. Councillor Darby. Four. Councillor Bartley. Against. Councillor Casey. No. Deputy Mayor. No. Councillor Collins, are you online? It's 
not online. Councillor Coombe. Aye. Councillor Cooper. Against. Councillor Dalton. Against. Councillor Filipina. Against. Councillor Fletcher. For. Mia Phil. Against. Member Hinare. No. Councillor Henderson. Against. Councillor Hills. Abstain. Councillor Marholland. For. Councillor Newman. Yes, okay. Councillor Sayers. Councillor Simpson. For. Councillor Stewart. For. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Watson. For. Member Taipiri. No. Councillor Young. That motion is lost by 10 votes to 11. Thank you, members. We now go to the substantive. I'll just yes, check. Um, we're, going back to, we're going back to the substantive motions before us. And um, are there speakers to the substantive motions, please? There being none, I'm going to the vote then. Um, and I will put it on the voices and members, you are most welcome to, if you want to record um, dissent or assent on any particular part, you can do that. Sorry, so I'll go to the vote. Sorry, the chair, there's a question. Yes. Okay, can I comment on it? No, no. I've actually gone to the vote. I did pause. That's right. And I That's said... That's right. Two other people have said they want to comment on this. Um, okay, that is true that you did say earlier. Okay, members, I've actually... Okay, where am I? I'll take advice on, from the Senior Governance Advisor because I've actually called the vote. Um, where am That's I That's right, you did. Where am I at on that, please? I don't know, because that would be if you like to speak beforehand, but then you have moved into the vote. Yeah, they're probably going to be Okay, thank you. I have advice from the Senior Governance Advisor to uh, hear the speakers. Councillor Henderson. Thank you, and I'll be quick. I know it's very late, um, Councillor, and, and thank you for that, everybody. Um, look, through this process, we've seen months of effort trying to minimise and remove housing supply in the city. I think I feel, feel it's very important to speak up for this. Um, we've enabled and maintained entire communities in centrally located areas to operate as gated communities without the gate. I want to speak up today for people that spent last night in a garage or a car or a, or a couch. I want to speak up for people showing up to a rental with 30 other families there. Landlords can name their price and they're struggling and they're heartbroken. I want to speak up today for first home buyers that have standed by heartbroken as well, as their ability to own a home and set down roots with their families has slipped away month on month for years. I want to speak up for people with kids that are concerned about Auckland's climate emissions. There's a lot of talking while I'm talking. I think that's very please, rude, please, actually. Please, order. Members, um, can we just be conscious of the speaker and the, the noise and disruption you create by packing things and unpacking things. I didn't interrupt speaking. you. Okay, Councilor thank you. Um, anyway, talking about climate emissions and kids facing worse futures than their parents. I want to talk about, and I want to shout out to the Member Toe Henare tonight. I thought that was a fantastic corridor because I want to talk about our Tangata Whenua and our Tangata Pacifica. Ask where their heritage is in all of this. We haven't been talking about that. We haven't been talking about people that have felt forced out of their homes from the 70s onwards in centrally located areas of Auckland, places like Ponsonby, places like Ray Lynn. We all know the histories around here. We all know that. I want to speak up for people that want to live centrally. They just want to live centrally. They want to lo locate closer to where they work, closer to where they study, beautiful neighbourhoods to walk to work or take public transport. A beautiful life for Aucklanders. That's the kind of things that we should be providing as a council. And what leadership do we offer these people on council? What leadership do we give them? 
We've just spent months trying our best to restrict housing supply for the, these people in areas where housing is most needed. We've gone to the public saying we should lock away 41% of the land within five kilometres of the city centre. That's okay. That's what we should do. Outrageous. The irony in all of this is that heritage homes are protected by the legislation. They'll continue no matter what we do because we're conflating, and we have done it all night, special character with heritage. That's a very important point. Um, one more bit of myth-busting here. I've heard today this will do nothing for affordability. And if that's your view, you should go and talk to PwC. You should go and talk to Sense Partners. You might want to talk to the New Zealand Infrastructure Commission's Director of Economics. They all disagree with you. I want to talk more about our leadership here because we made a promise to Aucklanders through the climate emergency we would do something to secure their future. We've been advised today that somehow when you build closer to homes, homes that are closer to work and study and you remove those transport emissions, somehow that doesn't matter or somehow it makes it even worse. That's outrageous. I'm reading this in the report here from 98 to 104. That's, that's not good. We continue to build outwards into the outer suburbs and ask people to drive to work. Councillor Cooper and I represent these people in Massey, places like that. We continue to build over vital food growing areas in Franklin and other places because housing has to go somewhere. Councillors, let me be clear, if we're serious about climate, we need to act now. We need to enable homes closer to work or study and allow more building in central Auckland. Councillors, we have inequality coded into the planning DNA of our city. Areas that have taken on growth are further from jobs for low-income Aucklanders. The prosperity index, index that we publish every couple of years has shown areas without any special character and working class areas like mine that I represent, people are struggling and their quality of life and opportunities are falling behind the Auckland average. We haven't kept up with their infrastructure. We've da damned hundreds of thousands of people to being stuck in traffic away from their families every single day. I've been asked to go and see some pretty homes today and that's fine, I'll go and check those out. But it's cold comfort to my constituents in the Kantar Pole, on doorsteps, on street corners, that have told me how just angry and pissed off they are. They want fairness. That's all they want. Henderson Massey and communities like it have done their bit. They've led for 12 years on housing. They've rolled up their sleeves in a housing crisis. They've said, you know what? Everyone's job to fix this. Westies are welcoming people, and that's what Toe Henry pointed out as well. We've welcomed new West Aucklanders with open arms for 12 years, but all we ask is fairness for housing, for climate, for a fair opportunity for young families to get ahead. I'm telling you, areas of Auckland that have not taken on housing, that you can do your bit. Do your bit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Councillor Coombe, your call. Oh, <clears throat> Tēnā koe, Mr Chair, um, nā mihi nui kia koutou. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on this. I appreciate that it's very getting very late, um, but I, I do think it's important to be able to um, talk to this item um, and especially to be able to reflect on um, the approach that I wish to take um, to what, I, um, what I'm supporting, particularly around the qualifying matters. Um, and the walkable catchments. Okay, bear with me. Sorry, I've got just some things that I've written, but I will try not to get a coffee. Um, I just wanted to start with a quote from one of the submissions. Um, I fully accept the bind the council is in with special character versus urban density and how the new central government rules make this even harder as they supersede the individual and specific rules the council could make in its own city. I support urban density as a pragmatic solution and I'm a huge supporter of contemporary architecture, but I also cherish the special character areas that Auckland has and I think a priority must be to preserve as much of the history of Auckland's architecture as possible. And I don't mean just villas. The submitter concludes by saying, how all of these competing needs are met, I have no idea. Good luck. And it is indeed a very tricky one to navigate, but I really think it is, a pos it is possible that we take an approach that is a win-win. And I don't really take, I don't agree with the binary view that it's an either or situation. It's not either special character areas or affordable housing. It's not climate action or special character or it's not equity 
or special character, I think we can address all of these and more. Um, what the government has dealt with is a very blunt instrument. It is a once one size it fits all um, that we need to make work um, for Auckland. We can't ignore the intensive unitary plan process that put us in a very <coughs> different situation to other T1 authorities. And we can't ignore that the unitary plan didn't get everything right. Um, but the NPSUD is just one tool. It's not the be all and end all. And I really would like that through this process, it gives us an opportunity to commit to leverage on all the tools available to council to enable more affordable, sorry, more affordable housing and well-designed neighbourhoods that provides everyone across all our communities the opportunity to live healthily and sustainably and safely connected to places of work, study, recreation and community amenities. And at the same time, we can identify links to past development that are important to Aucklanders and that I think future generations will want to see retained. Um, and in supporting these recommendations, I just wanted to outline kind of what I've been stepping through. And it is first to look at the legislative requirements. We can't just ignore what is in, um, you know, Section 77L of the RMA, and um, we have to ensure that it stacks up. And rolling over all the SA SCAs clearly didn't meet that test. Um, secondly, I've looked at the, <coughs> the evidence that's provided um, to us. And that evidence, I totally acknowledge, has to be backed up by expert advice that needs to go to the hearings panel. And if we don't get the back, get, get um, back up the evidence, um, the final decision is going to sit with the minister. Um, so I don't want us to take a high risk strategy that we end up with that that position. And thirdly, I have considered all of the feedback, and I have read, I think for Waitemata, there was at least a thousand odd submissions, and many submissions from the organisations too. And what this really highlighted for me that there is still a lot of work that needs to be and done to assess that feed feedback and consider that impact. And staff have acknowledged this, and it's why I'm supporting the Chair's recommendations that do allow us more time in terms of what's reported back in August. Um, and so I do thank um, you, Mr Chair, for including um, the amendments around the walkable catchment. Um, you know, next I've taken into account where we're at in this process and it's by no means a done deal from this decision tonight. This is just, we're just deciding on the preliminary response, the engagement from the preliminary response. Um, it has put a lot of pressure on staff and a constrained time frame, um, but it's resulted in the opportunity to consider the feedback as the work continues. And there may be things that I'm supporting today that we have got wrong or we have pushed the interpretation to the limit, but we still have further cons consultation to go and an independent panel to look at this in more depth at the evidence, um, based on the evidence. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so just a final, and I just wanted to make a final comment just about that my approach is overall is guided unsurprisingly by a climate lens. And I want to ensure that we deliver on the goal of Te Taruki Atafari, Auckland's climate plan to achieve a low carbon and resilient region. You know, in many ways, the MPSUD actually runs contrary to this objective by enabling more sprawl in areas with unsuitable infrastructure. And at the same time, but at the same time, I agree we need to enable more urban development with 15 minute neighbourhoods across Auckland. As Alex um, Bonham from the Waitemata Local Board highlighted, many of the SCAs are already mid-density, delivering well-being and providing support for local economies. You know, Arch Hill is an exemplar of a low-traffic neighbourhood, and we should be wanting that for all of our communities. Um, if the climate impacts can't be reconciled with this approach that we're going to decide on tonight, um, then I would, you know, I will be reflecting that in my decisions down the track. But I think at this point we have time for further consideration, further time to review the advice and um, and the analysis. So therefore, I commend the motion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Coombe. Uh, Councillor Young, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, nobody wants to lose previous Auckland. But the reality is our city's population has doubled in the last 30 years. And the way we are growing is impact our quality of life. Right now, we have a serious housing shortage. 
That's the reason why both major parties in the parliament agree for the more housing and the intense intensification. Auckland is a global city and it will be continued to grow for current and the future generations. We need to make space for this growth in the right areas, close to convenient transport, schools, service and green space. Of course, we do need to protect what makes Auckland special in the first place. That includes our natural environment and the significant Maori and the Europe her heritage. In my view, good transport remains the priority for Auckland, as Mayor Goff also mentioned before. Providing good transport can benefit a number of challenges we face as a city, such as cost of living, quality of life, connecting each other, increasing the house choices, and transport equ equity. The NPSUD and the increasing housing opportunity along rapid transit supports this. As I have said previously, there are huge changes ahead for our city. Auckland will definitely lose something, but we can gain something more with a more connect, livable city. Staff have, have done a great job to argue for the qualified qualifying matters and identify infrastructure, infrastructure needs within the limits of the central government's legislation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, my fellow councillor, and the all local boards efforts together. We are regional councillors, and I look into next 30 years, and I support the recommendation. Let's get Oakland moving forward. Kira, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Councillor Watson. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mm. Chair. I won't be too long. Um, when I look at the recommendations before us in this item generally, I, I think back to when the super city was set up and some of the central government politicians expressed the fear that in creating the Auckland Council, they, they may have created a, a political superpower uh, to eventually rival the government. Well, I think today's proceedings and many other besides, <laughs> I might add, uh, show that they needn't have worried. What have we got here? Poor old Auckland responding to the contradictory demands uh, of one party who for nine years denied there was a housing crisis and the other who within nine months of taking office were going to fix it all by building 100,000 Kiwi built homes which petered out after a couple of hundred. Someone mentioned that it's an election year. Yes, it is an election year this year. More importantly, as far as all this stuff goes, it's an election year next year for central government. And I would suspect that that's what's behind this fundamentally flawed legislation and the indecent haste with which it's being imposed. Um, the tragedy in all this is that there is a housing crisis. There are successive generations of Aucklanders getting shut out of the housing market with no hope of ever being able to, to even get the most rudimentary structure. That is sad. There is no excuse for that. In other countries, it have been a revolution. Those people have a justifiable grievance, but the, the tragedy is that this isn't going to do anything about it at all. In fact, in a perverse way, I rather suspect it's going to make it worse. We heard from our Mayor that, um, that we, the Collective Council, had been told by Ministers that have made their points clear, pointedly clear. You know, one, an MP for, for Wigram in Christchurch, uh, the other one who seemed to be confusing special character areas with scheduled heritage buildings. The other people we listen to. I ask myself, where's the political response from Auckland? Where's the fight from Auckland? Where's the leadership from Auckland to take these people on? Where was the response to that article? Well, the silence was deafening. There was none. When we think about heritage, basically heritage is, is, to, is to capture the past and, and to, to value that heritage and to leave something to succeeding generations. And we heard various speakers today talk about Kath Tizard, Chris Fletcher, I'd say Len Brown even. Len Brown through the, the unitary plan process. We're aware of that. We're aware of those scenes uh, right across Auckland that 
that were preserved through those processes. And if you look at the special schedule 17 of special character schedule, you'll see how that was aptly incorporated in that. Today, we go out of here and what's our legacy? Our legacy is losing 25% of our heritage, just like that. Totally contrary to what our Prime Minister said she would do when she was spokesperson for culture, arts and heritage. But I guess the one thing that perhaps emerges from all this, other than this feeble attempt to stand up to this government with this and any number of other matters, is at least we have found our legacy for our Mayor, and that is the loss of a quarter of Auckland's heritage. We won't be pointing to those photos like that and paintings and talking about Phil Goff. We won't be doing that, and neither will Aucklanders. Come on, easy, easy. I think you, you just don't need to go there, Council. I just no. I, no, you I've, don't need to well, go there. Well, I think there. I've been rather polite. I'll be a lot politer than what the Auckland public will be saying, Mr. Chair. I can tell you that. Just keep to the topic. Maybe get someone to make another code of conduct complaint, eh? Okay. Um, now you have gone too far. Withdraw, please. It's a statement of fact. No, I support him. I it's a statement of fact. Yeah. I'm That's asking, what happens around yeah. here. I'm asking you to withdraw. Well, I'm not withdrawing it. it. It's a statement of fact. OK, of then I answer. am ruling that your speaking turn is concluded. Thank you. Right. Councillor Sayers, we'll your, we'll your turn to take a call. There's some people um, with have I have no calls, sir, but support the accusations. Member Toe, I think Council. it might be you, Member Toe. Possibly not. Members, if you're online, can you please make sure you're muted? <laughs> Councillor Sayers, your call. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm just supporting Councillor Watson's objection. Did you want to carry on, Councillor Sayers, or is that it? Uh, uh, in general, sir, um, yes, I would, but beyond that, uh, yes, I would. I just, uh, uh, I guess I'm just worried, sir, about the pepe pop, the, the, for want of a better term, pepe popping of developments within areas that don't have enough infrastructure to support them. So that means the cost will go on to the developer and I haven't seen enough evidence that how that will happen. Uh, I just worry about that, sir. And in my area, it's a, it's, there's only one area, and the way up is 50% of the Auckland city is called uh, the Rodney Ward. Uh, is um, Walkwood. It, it happens to have over 5,000 people, so it hits the threshold. So, um, and outside that area, there's a huge amount. There's, it's going to go from three, from 5,000 to 30,000 people in greenfield sites very quickly. And it seems unreasonable to me that they should intensify inside that envelope um, when there is, it might provide, I don't know, 100, 2,000, I don't know, because no one can answer the question homes inside that area, but outside the area there's definitely 30,000, right? So. I will be um, conversing with my colleagues in the uh, planning department about, about how we could potentially uh, offer a solution that for the division of um, Rodney, there could be a um, possible solution about intensifying inside the town and not um, um, opening everything up blanket. 
in, in Pukekohe might be another example. So, so I just want to signal there. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Thank you, Councillor Sayers. And Councillor Newman, your call to speak. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, look, I wasn't going to speak, Chair, but let me reiterate the point to my good friend, Shane Henderson. The cost of land drives the commercial price point. The more expensive the land, the more expensive the housing that will be capitalised as a result. And yes, you could say, well, look, we're going to make more land available in Auckland, but the Auckland property market is such that the, the, the land is so incredibly valuable that what you will get is an increase in the supply of housing, which will remain unaffordable to the vast majority of people. And we have heard this all before about a policy intervention delivering affordable housing. Remember the special housing areas, remember the SHAs, an exercise in developers' lotto. Remember good old Kainga Order's predecessor, Housing New Zealand, the biggest advocate for liberalising New Zealand's planning rules through the hearings process on the proposed Auckland Unitary Plan. Why did they do that? They didn't do it because they were overly generous. They did that because they didn't want to be taxed by the requirement to actually have to defend the merits of their development. They want to uh, develop in an unconstrained way. And I'm sorry, but the biggest property developer in Auckland is the state, and the state is acting to remove from the requirement uh, to defend its housing program uh, obligations, and it is called the NPSUD. Now, I, you know, uh, I, 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 I've listened to, I've listened to this discussion. I think that there has been a bit of emotion on both sides. Fair enough, but be under no illusion. Um, the biggest policy failing uh, in recent years uh, in terms of housing has been Kiwi Build which turned out to be something of a Ponzi scheme, actually. It didn't work. And so we have the NPSUD because there is a need, apparently, to increase the supply of developable land in Auckland, which actually has an abundance of land available for development. It just happens to be uh, in locations which doesn't meet the desire of every single developer, including going order. Um, but, you know, the way to get around that for this government is to remove um, all protections or is try and remove as many protections as possible. So, Your Worship, I very much appreciate the opportunity um, to, be, to, to consider um, the matters that will come up through the submissions process. But ultimately, um, it is a great disappointment indeed that appeal rights have been removed. Um, but it's important that it's important that this council remembers that although the advice of the officers is pertinent, it isn't always um, uh, the advice that the commissioners take. And I go back to that SHA in my ward in Hill Park. That SHA is the product not of the officers and not of the politicians. It was the product of the residents who made the argument in 2014 in the submissions process and in the hearings, notwithstanding the council, and they got that SHA uh, and they want to defend it and good on them. And there's nothing wrong with their desire to retain the character um, that is um, that is intrinsic to that community, um, just as other communities want to have a fight to retain their character too. So um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I think the debate has been interesting uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to make these comments. Thank you, Councillor Newman. Uh, that concludes the speaking. I uh, didn't have you. We didn't, but Councillor Walker. Um, so I'll, I'll be brief, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, obviously disappointed with the outcome around um, special character. 
But I would like to commend immensely the many, many Aucklanders, thousands, I would suggest, that have engaged in the process to try and retain Auckland's special character and its heritage. Everybody that I've met has been entirely genuine, they've been very well informed, and they've given it their best shot, and I'm sure that they haven't given up. They will continue to strive to retain character and heritage because they love it. They live in houses, many of which, most of which, just about all of which, they've lovingly restored and they've looked after. And the people that I met and, and know regard that as part of what they are, part of their heritage, part of what makes them special and Auckland special. They really care. So thank you to all of those uh, people. I agree with Daniel Newman that the outcome of this draconian legislation is not affordability, but the exact opposite. And we all know that because the value of a property increasingly when it's sold now will be the value not of what an ordinary person will buy it for a home, but what a developer can realise on it. And they crunch the numbers and the price that they pay reflects what they can take out of it. And regretfully, too many of them take out the max. And this legislation, draconian as it is, enables the maximum because it doesn't have any requirement for parking and so many other things. So you can pack far more on. Arguably, you can make more on it. But the outcome won't be a good one for Aucklanders. And as the officers have pointed out, there are no gains around this. There are no gains for climate. In fact, the exact reverse. There will not be gains for affordability. There will not be gains for beauty. In fact, the exact opposite. What we are moving towards is effectively the uglification of Auckland. Mm -hmm. That is what we will see because that is what an uncontrolled marketplace delivers on. And it is delivering now because in many situations that is what you will see. And that is what Aucklanders see. They see it in streets around them. And throughout the area that I have some affinity with, which is the Albany Ward, throughout that ward, in West Harbour, in Greenhithe, Herald Island, throughout the bays, Whangaproa, Oriwa, everywhere, we will see uncontrolled development mm. and effectively chaos, chaos, a circumstance where development, development can happen anywhere, irrespective of whether the infrastructure at the basic pipe level up to the bigger pipes and the bigger pipes and the roads cannot cope, and this council has no ability to fund that, particularly against a background where we don't know where it's going to be. It's likely that it will be in the areas where the housing is perhaps not so crash hot, where the developers can move in and make even more money. But correspondingly, those areas are also the areas that are often served by poorer transport. Areas like Whangaproa, where I am, which frankly will go downhill in terms of livability because you won't be able to get off much of the peninsula because of the traffic congestion. And that is the reality that those people know because they already experience something close to it every day, now without this matter getting worse. And that situation will replicate across Auckland. So this is a very sorry, and I'll say it again, draconian piece of legislation that was not supported by scarcely any evidence on the part of government and continues to be unsupported. And what I say that is disappointing again is when this council and in particular members of the community, did put up excellent evidential information around heritage, that could not carry the day around this table. And I've, if I look at the walls 
of the assembled mayors downstairs in this chamber and the people that I know that have served as councillors for Auckland City and other councils over the years that have sought to preserve heritage over generations of councils across North Shore, Auckland, Manukau and others. That heritage, 25%, stands to go unless we can fight some action to try and preserve it. I'm not giving up now. I'm certainly not giving up against this government because I think it will fail. And I think also that the national government will suffer accordingly and so will the Greens. That is my view. And we need to make this an issue to take forward. And that is part of the message that I've sought around this chamber and from the mayor that we have a campaign for Auckland to do the things You're that matter, six. and that includes minutes, heritage. Member. And it is disappointing that we have not shown that leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I think that does conclude the speakers. Any last hands? I wouldn't want to. Just a, just a really quick note. I've emailed my vote to you because it's a bit complicated. OK. okay. That's for, so, members, we are now going to the vote. And I'm going to take it in parts. And I recommend that you, if you want to record um, your dissent, then we will record it um, on any part. Um, and I will take A on the voices, and I'll put A now. All those in favour say aye. 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 And to the contrary, say no, and declare that carried. And that's carried unanimously. We will now go to B. So this is B, including Roman 1, 2 and 3. Taking it on the voices, all those in favour say aye. 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 Against. And yes. I haven't called against yet. And all those against? <laughs> okay. Against. Okay, so um, can I just... I think I heard Councillor Mulholland against... Uh, you certainly did. Councillor Fletcher. Councillor, Councillor Fletcher. Simpson. Can you scroll up too, please, Kalinda, so we can see them as we're voting? Thank you. Okay. Can I just... Uh, I'll just go Take through. Please. I've got... One moment, please. I've got Councillor Mulholland. I've got Councillor Fletcher against. Uh, was there... Councillor Yeah, Stewart I will... Against? I'm, I'm supportive of B3, just not 1 and 2. Okay, we'll make a note of that. Um, Councillor Walker is in the category of Councillor Simpson. Members, I need to make sure this is recorded accurately tonight. So um, we will now. I yes, I declare that carried. Yeah. Sorry, Councillor um, Watson what, was agreeing. Yes, yeah, so I'm recording my vote against B. Against, against B. Against the whole of B. Oh, okay. Sorry, B, the B as it stands. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. We will now go to C, D and E. I think we can take C, D and E together. All those in... Please, Linda. Just a minute, please. Councillor Simpson, what did you want to add? I just, I'm just trying to keep an eye on the um, uh, resolutions because okay, we'll we've bring cheese resolutions you've, in there. Yeah. And you've... Yeah, uh, Chair, my, uh, I don't think you heard me, but my uh, resolution against B. Your sorry. resolution against B? Your vote is against yeah, sorry, B. Chair. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah. Against B, Councillor Sayers, is it? OK, Sorry. we'll record you against B. OK, we're moving Thank on you. now. And we'll just bring the C, D and E. And I'll take it on the voices. All those in favour say aye. 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 And to the contrary, please say no. <coughs> Good. Declare that carried. And that's carried aye. unanimously, C, D and E. We will now go... For F through to K, F through to K, we'll just wait for 
scrolling it up. Okay. And I'll take it on the voices. All those in favour say aye. 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 And contrary, no. No. Against. Mulholland. Okay, just one voice at a time. I will take Councillor Henderson first. Sorry, no on F, I, I... Can you uh, use your mic, please? Oh, sorry. Again, sorry. Uh, no on F, I and K. Thanks. Thank you. Just recording that now, mm -hmm. and then I'll go to Councillor Mulholland. Oh, thanks, Chair, because I thought you said you were just going to take those as the whole. Can we give you the separate items, then? Because I'm K to N. We, we have only voted, as I said, we have only voted on F through to K. We have not come to anything after that. So if there's any part of the... K, hey, thank you, K. Hey. You're against K. So not you haven't K, got please. to abstain yet. So could you do abstain? Because I want to abstain on that. Um, that's true. Um, but normally the... We don't call for an abstention normally. Uh, it's put by the member who wishes to abstain. So, Councillor Fletcher, Fletcher you're... That's why I asked some minutes ago, in fact, some many minutes ago, to, to have the um, outline of how the votes were going to be taken. But that's fine. I, I'm abstaining if you're taking them in a section by section. Yeah, I clearly outlined that, I thought, but I'm happy to repeat that, and we will take your vote so just to abstention. clarify, Councillor Fletcher, are you abstaining uh, clauses F through to K in entirety? That's what I heard. I will email you separately, but yes, because of the way in which this has been handled, I will have to abstain because I haven't felt the opportunity to express my vote accordingly. OK. I, I, I didn't hear any disagreement with the way I outlined how it was best to be handled at the outset. But fair enough, uh, we've got Councillor Fletcher abstaining on F through decay. Now, are there Chair, any... Chair, point of order on that. It was in writing. What is in writing from you, Councillor Mulholland? No, um, Chair, actually I did read it was from Councillor Fletcher, a formal request in writing so I just want to support that. That was that was a formal request, and I read that thinking that's what we would be provided that information, because that is what we were told in the chat. Thank you. Okay, I don't. I'm I'm chairing the meeting. I'm not watching a chat bar on a laptop. If um, and it hasn't been communicated to me. I'm sorry. So. Councillor Watson, did you want to record? Yeah, just I'd like to have my vote recorded against L, uh, Roman numeral 2 and we haven't, 3. We haven't got to that. We're only voting on F to K at the moment. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, the language. Thank you. I, I just said Jesus. That's not a swear word. I think somebody was just maybe Last praying, um, <laughs> Councillor Holland. Well, we'll move along, please. Um, we, I think we've got all the votes you're a, you're for that section. Order, please. If we just have order. We will now take the vote on L, M, N and O. L, M, N and O. All those in favour, please say aye. Hold on, scroll up, please. OK, we'll just wait for it to come up. L, M, N and O. All those in favour say aye. 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 And contrary, please say aye. no. No. Right, um, record. I'd like to vote against L3, please. Thank you. I'll just take Councillor Henderson against all of them. Um, and Councillor Simpson, you were against which one? Sorry, I didn't quite hear. L3. L3. And Councillor Watson, L2 and 3. And Councillor Walker, 2 and 3. Councillor Watson, 2 and 3. Councillor Walker. Oh, sorry, 2 and 3. Yes, correct. I'm, I'm, Fletcher, I'm, I'm, 2 and 3 as well. Yeah. And Councillor Mulholland. And, and L. Council. Okay, I'm just 
making sure Councillor Stewart against two and three. Okay, then I'll go to Councillor Simpson. You are against two and three. Correct. And Councillor Mulholland, Say please. Two and three. Al, two and I'm three. asking Councillor yeah. Mulholland, please. L in entirety and M. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Sayers, you're against what? Two and three, you said. You said L two and two. three. Right. Members. If we actually listen and give the opportunity to somebody, you know, a, a councillor to respond, it's probably going to be a lot shorter this meeting. So, Councillor Sayers, tell me again, what are you voting against? I'm sorry, Steve. Um, L, two, and three. Thank you very much. Okay, we we concluded that part, and then we will go through to P through to V. P through to V. We'll scroll it up. Just waiting, just to make sure you're what you're voting on. Okay, I'll put that to the vote on the voices. All those in favour, say aye. 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 Contrary, no. And declare that carried. Could I? Could I have my vote against P? That's Richard. Against, the light against P. And we have delaying the implementation of that corridor. Yep. And um, abstain on P, P. Councillor Henderson. Okay, I'll just check with Senior Governance Advisor. We're confident we've got all the records yep. correct. Because um, members, you can't email later, it has to be in the meeting, it has to be during this meeting. And uh, we have no extraordinary items, uh, so that draws us to the conclusion of the meeting. Thanks for your attendance. But no, we brought we brought the confidential item into the open record. That was the Albany decision. Yeah. Yes. So declare the meeting closed. Thank you, everybody.